Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Voice of Youth. I'm your host Ali Mohsin Hashmi. The Voice of Youth is a program presented to you every week on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, you must have noticed that normally on Saturday it's between 5 and 6 but on a Sunday the timing has slightly deteriorated over the last two weeks of which we apologize for. Uh, the idea of this show was to be 5 to 6 between Saturday, uh, between 5 to 6 on Saturday and Sunday but uh, for, due to uh, Aftari time coming closer and closer, uh, Sunday time has been slightly affected and today the show is coming to you uh, other than 5 o'clock so we apologise. Um, just a little introduction of the show, as you know that Voice of Youth is a weekly show where we try to cover off uh, the issues our youth are surrounded by uh, in the Western world. Uh, and these issues are either uh, within our communities and these issues also associate with the wider society. Um, they entail education issues, they entail employment issues, issues associated with our matrimonial affairs and also uh, a lot of um, a stigma that's attached to our youth. We had a very um, uh, useful debate yesterday when we had a member of youth in-house and we also had a panellist who were actually talking about the issues that our youth was posing and also some of the concerns which came across uh, very positive and I hope you are actually making notes and also um, feeling you know that your issues are actually being addressed to a degree if you're a member of youth and you think that you have got a particular concern question or anything or a comment uh, that you'd like to share with us uh, we do need your feedback as is really really important it gives us an idea to analyze uh, if we are going in the right direction purely because it's a first venture of its kind on Hidayat television so we'd like you to uh, write to us. Our email address is voy, which is Voice of Youth. So voy at hidayat.tv. You can also phone in, um, but the telephone lines on Saturdays uh, for the live shows and on Sunday, you can phone in to actually register your concern, comments, or any questions that you may have. Uh, this particular show uh, ideally would be um, pointing out to the issues that our youth have got and if the parents are watching this show, we would like to hear from you as well. Uh, as always, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the panels and guests for today. Uh, on my left, it's Kurat Lane Zaidi, uh, a youth worker who's worked in the community within the age group of 13 to 25, working with various councils, uh, working with private and public sector, and also um, working with the youth uh, on major projects. Uh, have worked in the community for more than seven to ten years, added a great deal of value. We welcome you to the show and thank you for coming with us today. Uh, secondly, we've got Amina Bukhari, uh, who has been with us from day one, Ad added a great deal of value to the show, uh, an academic and also a senior analyst uh, in, in particular education. Has worked in the community for more than 20 years uh, and here with us today again on our request. Amina, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. Uh, right next to Amina, we've got our sister Samreen Zedi, who's here uh, representing uh, the genre of parents and also in the past she has been a management professional, uh, worked on senior management positions, um, a highly educated individual and also added a great deal of value back to the community by serving the local um, idara and also uh, by having um, children who are doing a great deal of work for the youth and themselves uh, well placed in the community. So we welcome you to the show once again Samarine and it's really pleasant to see you again. Uh, yesterday we had uh, a member of youth, uh, brother on Muhammad, who uh, came to the show, uh, written to us and expressed uh, the youth issues which weren't being highlighted and also we, it is really refreshing to have uh, somebody from the youth um, uh, representing our community in the show, uh, we welcome Brother Muhammad uh, on Muhammad again to the show and we thank you for your time again. Uh, just a brief recap of yesterday, uh, we, we've been talking about uh, youth unemployment, we've been talking about crime in youth, we've been talking about education, a lack of education on the grassroots, underachieving and that actually then led to um, a particular point where we uh, discussed that government has decided to uh, pull out 600 or so million pound out of the public spending, leaving uh, a lot of projects which catered to our youth on the wider society were greatly affected. Um, and when those projects were affected, then the youth led to, or I should say metaphorically speaking, not all youth, but uh, certain youth led to uh, crises uh, like Birmingham riots, London riots, Manchester riots, and riots up and down the country. Um, and that 
clearly uh, showed a degree of dismay um, on uh, youth towards uh, the establishment. Now, when we talk about our community, uh, we are very fortunate to have our idaras because um, on, a, on a demographical level, uh, within five to six miles, there is an idara serving the community. And when we talk about community, mm -hmm. Shia community, and when you talk about Muslim community, then there is uh, that distance uh, shrinks to uh, less than a kilometer. So there are idaras, there are mosques who are doing a great deal of work for our youth. And last week and yesterday, we briefly talked about what is it that these idaras can do to help our youth who are not being helped by the wider society or establishment at present. So starting from uh, that point, uh, over to you, Samreen. Yesterday, we briefly talked about, or I should say in depth, uh, talked about our idaras can do a lot. Um, I mean, not to say that they are already doing a great deal of work. They are actually giving us spirituality. They're doing a lot of work for our education, uh, i.e. religious education. They cater to our uh, religious needs. Are they catering to, um, on, on a mass level, are they catering to the needs of our youth in the Western society? I think we mentioned yesterday that um, the onus is back to the committee members, the yeah. Idara members, those people that visit the Idara. Yeah. And are, if, if the Idara is not meeting our needs, are we questioning the Idara in that sense? Are we questioning the committee members? Are we, are we asking them, this is what we need and this is what you need to provide us <coughs> as members of that um, organization or that community? Community, it, it is the whole community is responsible for providing a service, and if that service is not being provided, are we questioning it? Okay, or are we just going along with whatever's available to us and just and complaining to ourselves and not doing anything about it? Right, so what, from, from, from the sounds of things, we, we were saying that it is, again, our mm. responsibility mm. to seek help mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to idaras. Mm -hmm. um, and ca you know, recapping on uh, Brother On's point from yesterday, mm -hmm that if you question uh, a senior position holder mm -hmm. in a particular idara, mm -hmm. uh, the general feeling would be pretty unpleasant response. On, do you share the same view still? Yeah, it's, uh, as I said before, it's because, it's because of the fact that we, you know, today, um, the, because of the problems are different today than they were yesterday or, you know, in the past generation, um, for a younger person to approach you know, as I said before, an elder in our community, and and for even for an, for a person uh, who's come back from back home, an elder person to to listen and you know take yeah. take it in that you know he's actually telling me that you know he's got a drug problem. For example, he yeah. has got a drug problem. To be able to handle it, not take it personally, not say you know you're ruining my our dignity or your honor, respect, rather than doing that and you know telling him that he's got a problem to tell what the solution is to be able to have the courage to come up with a solution rather than take it to heart that there's a problem and that for that youth to be able to have build a connection with the elders in our community including you know our, our parents our uncles fam blood out of family out of family um, our scholars you know this this important thing so um, and how do you think our community because obviously our idaras are pretty mm. uh, we're a tight community when it comes to idara and we sit next mm. to each other literally a matter of inches really um, and when you share, you know, for example, if uh, Brother On goes to, uh, you know, just, you know, using, excuse me for using you as example, yeah. but if Brother On goes to, um, you know, somebody in Idara mm -hmm. and says, right, okay, uh, Brother, I've got, or Uncle, I've got this problem, that I am actually taking drugs and I don't want to. Uh, I haven't got that sort of, uh, you know, degree of relationship with my parents that I can go to my parents and, um, you know, get them to feel that, um, you know, I'm somebody who's, is, you know, leading on the wrong path or on the wrong path. How do you think our idaras are catering to this particular uh, counselling level? Because we're only talking about education, um, you know, a traditional education, but clearly sociology and our social skills and our communal skills come in handy as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether the idaras are actually meeting that need. 
Um, and if they are, I would be expecting them to meet it, meet it at a professional level. So if, if, uh, uh, if a young person is reluctant to go to their parents, then they would be reluctant to go to their, uh, their community members. So I, I would expect the Idara to provide a trained professional or somebody who's had the training to go out there and deal with those problems. Because quite often people like to go to their doctor or, or somebody outside of their community to talk about their personal issues because obviously they don't want to, to be referred to or known in the community as a, as a drug user or as a alcoholic or, or anything else for that matter. So uh, I think that it's good that it ca if uh, the facility isn't there that it should be provided but it should be offered through somebody who's had the training of and, somebody yeah. and who is a professional who has uh, signed an agreement that they are anonymity. So it's, it's a valid advice rather than advice mm. ad hoc. Okay, so uh, what about, uh, I mean, from as far as you're concerned, if this is not already happening, why do you think it isn't? Um, because the people on the committee haven't got the vision or, yeah, they haven't got the vision of the urgency. So and what you're saying is where this is not happening? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, it's because they haven't got the f vision of the future and they're blind about what's happening now and but not realising what's going to happen tomorrow when they're not the chair, the secretary do, or whoever, whoever the position they sit on. And I think they're ignoring the ignorance to the potential of the young people they've got in the community. You know, so I think it, the, the book lies with the people on top. Cause so people on top in, in the IE, committee, on in the, the committee. committee, or the diary committee, I think they have more responsibility because we can talk here give them advice but again we can vote the people in but what they're going to do when they get voted are they going to change or well, they're not going to change and nine percent of the time it looks like it's not <coughs> changed so i think the book and the responsibility mainly lies with the people on the dara committee so Marine, do you think we're expecting too much from our daras why would be well what is too much that's it yeah you know we we are that idara We've helped to create it. If we're no, not, the idara is doing majalis, you know, idara is doing mosques, idara is doing uh, you know Quran education. Well, if that's doing, enough for the individual, mm. and if that's no, enough, but you tell us. Do you is, think if idara that's is enough for the majority? Then all well and good, but I don't think that is enough for the majority. I are think we asking for too much? Well, no, because the times are changing and sure. our needs are changing. And as we discussed yesterday, that our, with time our needs are changing, we need to adapt to those that's needs. Right. And if we don't then we're going to lose out on a lot. We're losing out on a whole generation. Same if, question to you, Are we looking, expecting too much from Idaras? No, because we're not actually they're not asking, asking for anything at all apart from attitude change. <coughs> the attitude change for, you know, to know, to realise that if a, a young person is, has the ability or has it inside them to able to ask for help, then they That's do right. feel guilt. If that person is looking for help, that means he has felt that he has realised he has done something wrong and he's looking to do something about it. If we're not approaching that youth and we're not helping that youth out, then we're wronging. We're, we're not, we're not, but what is the point of doing, praying five times a day, praying as a God, doing, going to Majalis, if we're not doing the basic things that we should be doing? Because at the end of the day, a day of judgment, we're going to be asked, what did we do to help our youngers before they fell in that pit? When they ask for help, we'll be there for them. Or we had there to help our children before we went to the grave. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we're going to be alive for maybe what 20, 30 years. But then when we go, will they be able to? You know, will they be on their feet? What will happen to their kids? You know, we don't want it to go to a downward spiral. So we're not asking for a lot. It's just attitude change. As the times change, your attitude has to change. That is the principle for every single thing. Everything is attitude change. You have to change with the times. You can't stay stuck. What sort of changes are you expecting? Um, attitude change, uh, realizing, realization of the different issues are, that are affecting youth as the day goes by. Because so, um, what what sort of attributes would define those changes? Okay, so um, for for example, like uh, I'd say for myself, uh, when I was maybe 15 years old, yep. I didn't face as much problem as maybe the 15 year old today does. Mm. If we have the uh, the ability so to you, recognize, you're referring four years back. From yeah, you just uh, just for example, for myself because I'm 20 now, but I know for a fact <coughs> that when I see a kid of 15 year old, 15 years old doing something which when I was 15 it would just be impossible so you wouldn't see were it around. they were different we have to recognize that the challenges are different and they do change even by the day they change by the day not by the year they change yeah, by the absolutely. day everything change we have to have the re first of all recognition and realization that there are changes that are happening and we are you know the 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 
the world is modernizing, it's changing, it's getting, uh, if you want to call it corruption, if you want to call it modernization, whatever title you want to give it, it is changing. And we need to recognize those changes first. Because first the problem, we re when we recognize the problem, then we can come for a solution. Because we're naming problems that we're not coming up with solutions, but to get the solution, we need to know the problems. That is the only thing that is being asked for from these idare is to change the attitudes and recognize the problems and then come to solutions, organize proper solutions, not just, you know, this is a possible solution, a strong couple of solutions and they have to be solutions that have to keep coming, they can't be just be one solution. At the same time. They have to keep, they have, it, has to, it has to keep rolling, the ball has to keep mm. rolling, it's a solution that has to keep going. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'd come to you on that. Our youth, as in our uh, Asian youth, uh, I speak on behalf of the all, you know, majority, mm. so our Asian youth haven't got challenges and issues as indigenous group would have and their youth would have, clearly because our youth is being trained at all times, A, by parents, two, by the relatives, three, by the area where they live, four, by the idaras, five, by the mosques, and the getting kind of engagements that they have. The only danger zone is when it comes to integration. Do you think, are we asking our idaras to teach them how to integrate? You no, know, I mean, if, if we look at the uh, statistics that we've been looking at in the past uh, weeks, <coughs> they speak for themselves mm -hmm. that, of course, we, we, we're not achieving our aims. And uh, it's show, uh, the statistics show that Pakistani Bangladeshi boys are underachieving and uh, the Pakistani groups aren't getting into higher education. So surely we, we, we're not mm -hmm. achieving our aims. And it's not about integration, it's about a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's about supporting your children through education, supporting your children through uh, the uh, the madrasas, giving them the religious, the the akhlaq, the the etiquette, all, all that good stuff goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we need to um, we we can't sort of just say madrasa. It's not just one one thing that we've got to focus on. It's again, it's parenting. It's the social economic climate. It's 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 the community. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the idaras, and all of us have got to do our bit. We we, we can't. So so somebody who's uh, so idaras have to, or the parents have to, or the children have to. The the youth have got to do their part That's too. Right. So somebody who's uh, for for example, uh, you know, we've got in Pakistanis there are only what uh, tw twelve cent. Uh, university graduates mm -hmm. um, getting first class degrees. Mm. Um, our idaras can change that, is that what you're saying? If they wanted to? No, the idaras can facilitate that. Facilitate to what? Change it. The change. Uh, to yeah. change it, yes. The, the idaras can facilitate that to change it. For example, if the, uh, the schools are underachieving, then they could have yeah. supplementary schools in the idaras. That's one thing. Okay. If there is a social problem, well, of course, with the, so drugs, the atmosphere is there. The infrastructure the is there. I, yes, yes. The schools are there. The classrooms are there. The teachers are there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a ready-made structure which just needs to be implemented. And we've got professionals there mm -hmm. who are willing to go out there and do voluntary services. Mm -hmm. I was just saying, why is our IDAR committee different to another any other committee in any other service providing? Like mm -hmm. my my committee, the ma youth managing. It, has the same roles, same responsibilities, but like Bravan <coughs> said, we got the future, we got the vision. Which committee is that? The my youth committee, um, my the people, the organisation work with. Yeah. Give it a mention. No. <laughs> we would like to hear um, who they are because obviously the idea of the show is that we want to know who are the people, who are the idaras, which idaras are doing great job because we could use those idaras because after all we're a small community. And when, you, when you're a tight community, uh, then clearly we could use, uh, you know, an example or a pilot program and use it as a pilot, and then hopefully implement it across the board. So, if the, there is something the, that's happening right now, in the Neaton community, in the Neaton, in the Neaton, yep. there is what? Sorry, there's we got a small, it's small in Dara, it's very diverse with different people from different ages, and our people on our committee are quite act proactive. In listening to what the community have to say, whether it's from finding the right Milan for Majlises or what the young people to actually give responsibility. So, what is your Idara doing outside Majlises, Namaz, Salat, that bracket? Give us that. So, it's the providing support, internal support, the building a community environment that you can go to different people. 
So what you're saying is a 18-year-old youth in Nuneaton would know where to go if there is a problem. They know who to go to mm -hmm. and they'll feel comfortable going because we, we create a comfortable, homely, yeah. safe environment and confidential environment. I had young people from that community come to me and ask me for advice, whether it's university advice or subject choices. I've had parents come to me and say, oh, my child is in this seg um, segment. What schools are they okay to go to? What schools bad? Mm -hmm. What schools got a good so reputation? Good. And and they're going to my mum, I've gone to different aunties. Right, you know, so you're, so you're is, can, can you help us understand? So your idara yep. in Nuneaton yep. has got, uh, what sort of age group do you have in the committee? we got from babies to, oh no, 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 no in, the no, in the community. Um, middle-aged, mm. is middle-aged, very um, middle-aged professional people in our okay. community. Okay, so, so you've got professionals to, yep. who've set up an idara yep. in a particular vicinity yep. of Britain and they've decided to work with the community. Yep. Absolutely and amazing. Proactive young people, like the young men have, the young boys um, meet and greet people outside where we are. Well, they help with the parking. If it's an elderly lady, they stop. They take her out, take her to the mosque, and park her car for her. Well, that, that's well and good, but they're, mm. they're all goodwill gestures. But we're not talking about goodwill gestures. Right. We're talking about making an impact on the community and well, what can it, it make it an helps impact. That helps. That interacts. You that's see, that right. Interaction is what develops that comfort zone. Well, I'm sure that, 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 that no, is exactly that what you would see. But, but yes, that, that, that happens widely. widely. That, that's but we're, we're looking at, <coughs> a, at a bigger mm. uh, structure, yes, if a, you a stronger infrastructure whereby you, we've got professionals mm. who are part Yeah, we of could the use it as a pilot program yeah, and then we could the present it to the public. But, you, exactly. but you're saying for this young man to, come to like, walk the elderly lady to the mosque is just a, a goodwill gesture, but to him it's not. It's a responsibility he's been given. So once you give him the responsibility to do that role, your role is to make sure the cars are part, the elderly get to the mosque and back safe, you give him that the ownership and responsibility. With, with due respect, would that help him get a good grade? It will. Would it get him a good grade? Yes, it will. How? His focus, he knows his, he's got responsibilities and expectations. Oh, OK. So, so this is attributes yep. which so make him focus better. So little attributes like this will make, him make sure that in, <coughs> in the school they start actually uh, you know, when I help them, little things like this will make a big impact on his future. On what's your take on this? What, uh, what, what I might say, if, as far because you're linking education into this, and I mean li linking education with uh, your personal mm -hmm. outer life. If you have a good life outside of school, you will most likely, you can, I'm probably correct. There are stats, stats you're probably, right. Yes. The there stats, are stats probably prove this, yes. that if you have a good life at home, and uh, you're happier at home, then you're happier in school, and vice versa. You're right. Because your outer life affects your school and your school life will affect your home yeah, life. Yeah, there are certain stats on uh, children from broken families. Yeah, and, and that, does have an, uh, that does play a role. And even those little things, mm. like helping the elderly, it makes you feel good inside. Not only does it make you feel good inside, so you, you sleep you've done well something. and you wake up you, well. Yeah, you wake up well. You've, you, you, it, it builds a love inside for your community. You can look at another member of your community like, as if the say, like another father or another That's uncle. Right, yeah. You know, you feel, you feel, a, you build a love. You don't want to go but into... But surely on... So um, you say it's, it's social responsibility. Yes, it is. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. yeah, so, but my question, my question is yeah. that this, this is something which you are expected to do anyway. It's not, this is, this is another thing that you, ex there's uh, this assumption, you know, that, you know, or, you know, that this guy, he, he's a youth, you know, he, he's expected to do this, he's expected to, you know, they just, it's, it's assumptions, everything, if you build um, your youth on assumption, on expectations, then you are turning a blind eye to what's actually going on. If you're, expe you're expecting that this, you know, this act of goodwill is, you know, just, it's, it's, it's a wajibad, it should be done, but, it it should be done, but if, if, if that person is, he's doing it out of his own choice, he's not doing it because your mom's like, yo, help that, lady cross the road and get her it's not that that is not what happens it is it's 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 a, it's a yeah it's a care it's it's something inside of you which okay. is something that you have to build on understood so that's got a, a social value to somebody and then clearly that would mm -hmm. play a part what else is it that your uh, organization does um, which helps youth become better youth and uh, improve we the give stats? them the sense of stability and find a good foundation that um, again, um, could we not a big community, big idara, big community? We Regardless, we could use that as a pilot. So yeah, clearly, the bigger organisations are watching this, they will be able to implement that. So, or perhaps with tweaks. Yeah, um, we also have the foundation that it's a, it creates a safe environment. You know, just because we can't, we don't do sporting activities or anything outside of. So you're saying that Arima Mbagas who are not offering any counselling to youth no. are not safe environment. 
Um, not a safe environment. They're not. Um, they're not with the reality, really. You know. So they, also, there's a disconnect from the youth. Uh, from the youth yeah. in those Mambagas. and what you're trying to do is trying to build that connection, and I then you try. Responsibility. To, absolutely. Oh, I, I'd like to share an example with you. At the Clifton Road. Please mosque. go for it. Yeah. Uh, at Clifton Road Mosque. We. I went to collect some surveys. And uh, I wanted to get some consent from uh, the, the head of the school. It was on a Sunday at Madrasa, and all the, uh, the, the children had gone mm. into their classes. And two young men in their <coughs> 20s or uh, early 20s or late uh, teens came up to me and he, they said, how can we help you? And he said, I'm the headmaster, he's the deputy. And they were actually running the school, but they were being overseen by their uh, older peers. Yeah. And uh, they, they listened to me, they heard me out, talked about the, um, the school, and says, it's wonderful, we will support you. And, and then they said, send us an email highlighting what you intend to do, a copy of the survey. And they circulated that amongst all the community in, amongst the mosque. Wow. Uh, and it, it's a proper structure. Yeah. These uh, these young men are actually running yeah. the school with the guidance of the older professionals. So, Marie, what do you think? So, those idaras who are watching us right now, yeah. what do you think these idara uh, professionals, or I should say, these idaras uh, personnels who actually run up the committee, what do you think they can do differently right well, now? Well, we have a structure. We have a building that's mostly vacant. It's not open. It's not. Uh, it's not being used 24/7. And when it's not being used, can that not be used as an educational? Well, it's Fajr, Zohar, Asar, Maghrib. Yeah, but even so, that what half an hour each of each namaz time, and then in between, can how that, would you use that can, space? Well, can you not use that? Is an idea, but can that space not be used as a study zone? Can there not be a place for the CD kids to go shop. when they've yeah. got exam periods? Brilliant. Maybe their house environment isn't a suitable environment right. for them to to revise and study and maybe they need a space. We have a, a building that is our building that we have established and can our children not benefit from that building? Would you have benefited if your idara or your mosque was offering uh, for you to a possibly a tuition? Okay, it's, again this is it's down to obviously individual pe people, obviously we all are different people so we just, deal, just deal with it just for <coughs> myself. Um, personally, yes, it would. It would definitely, definitely would affect. It would help um, that my community is getting involved with my outer education, apart from my Islam. Because obviously, right now, it's limited to madrasa. You refuse a madrasa, your Islam education. They don't pay too much attention to your academic education. If they, if if my daughter played, you know, part, they did. They did. It's not that they didn't. There was, you know, some members of, you know, community that were math teachers, that were doctors and etc. that were good at a certain thing that I could go to and say, listen, I'm not able to do this. I'm not, I'm not good at maths. I can't do this. I need some help. And they would very happily take out the time to personally, you know, help, help me. But if they had, for instance, the interactive classes, you know how the same how they have madrasa, to have maybe not not necessarily for older people but for younger kids i mean yeah. from a range of you know like up to gcse's then that would help because obviously from gcse's through on to a levels maybe that's not something that's a bit that, more personalized yeah maybe that's something yeah. that that some of a teenager is going to want to do go take tuition classes because obviously we've got a school you've you've got your revision it should be something that's open there there should be you know a, the ability to you know for someone to go there if they need I think help that, that really um, goes yeah. back to viewers our point where you know we actually discovered that our parents I mean, majority of our parents, we actually don't have very educated parents. And when we don't, um, our daughters can actually fill that gap. So surely when our parents actually feel that now GCSEs is beyond their remit and they're not able to add value to the children's education, then clearly uh, this is where the daughters can add value. And this is a suggestion for uh, all those daughters who actually have got their dedicated space. And that space is uh, widely vacant and not being used. So you can actually host tuition sessions for those students who actually uh, need help and uh, clearly um, I'm sure that would once be valued after that's been uh, done. W uh, would you not I mean, consider there, there that to be a good idea? There. Yeah, there are parents out there who are actually paying for tuition uh, sessions for their children oh, absolutely, yes, and they're sure. going to tutors who are not CRB checked mm. and they're putting their children at risk. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the Idara had a tuition centre for supplementary classes for the 11 plus, just for num numeracy, literacy, mm. general grammar work, mm -hmm. and, and then or, or GCSEs, and it'll be a, under a safe in, environment, 
and people would be able to meet as well and it would be proper yes absolutely I mean, I'm just, I'll just also. give you an example I mean uh, I'll give myself uh, for example um, if my daughter asked me for an hour in mm. a week or two hours in a week mm. and said would you be able to take care of these A-level students or these you know mm. undergrad students who actually possibly need help I with these areas mm. surely I would be you know first of all I think I'd feel proud that you know I've been asked for this mm. and then secondly I would possibly recommend a couple of other uh, yeah. members of community that I know would be able to add value. Uh, if this is that easy, why is it not being done? To put the life of people on top. Okay, what do you mean by that? Uh, the committee, the chairman, the secretary, all, it's all good, again, good well saying it, but you're preaching to people who have already been preached. You've got to preach to people who got the power in their hands. So those parents who are watching the show right now, mm -hmm and uh, they are members of idaras in their local mosques members of uh, a community they actually pay a particular donation now this is the time for you to question yourself that what are you getting for what you're paying now it is all well and good that you think that you're paying for the charity because it is imam's dersga and you have to keep it funded but on the same note uh, can this fund be managed slightly better do you think our parents or members of the community realise that this is a wider issue? I think they do now because obviously pa parents have got more worries than they did than my parents did when we were growing up. You know, with the society change, the so much influentiation, the integration of different communities. I think if we, again, if it's been mentioned here on the panel, if, if we don't act now, we're going to, the, peop the generation could be lost generation. And then we're going to be great. Oh, we've, you know, then be like, oh, we should have, should have, would have, could have. Attitude. Yeah. And that's not the right attitude to have because there's a lot of potential with young people. And if we don't appreciate them now, then we're not going to get the best out of them. Can we come up with any other suggestions for uh, as uh, to as what they can do? Well, we, we, sorry. Um, one, of, one of them would be, again, because of the high unemployment rate, same project I used to do in the youth service. Um, do neat workshops, CV workshops in Indada mm -hmm. with professionals. You know, give different um, experience, help young people who are struggling with CV right, interview skills, even helping them look for jobs. Mm -hmm. Sim simple things like this, they're not getting support outside the education system. So it's all good and well working with the primary schools, but the young people who have, a, who failed the GCC, who have needs, which means not in education, employment, training, we can support them. They're, they're, they don't need to be neglected because the society is neglecting them already. So we should not neglect them and support, give them more additional support. So our idaras basically can um, impact uh, unemployment. Yep. They can also impact, uh, help the unemployment get employed. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, do a bit of counselling and also offer tuition services That's where right. mm -hmm. not only and then it can become a business venture as well mm -hmm. for Idara and mm -hmm. that money can be better capitalised. Also encourage especially at the universities how we have a few we ha I think um, Alhamdulillah in most uh, universities we do have <coughs> a little bit society now um, but that is something that should definitely be encouraged mm -hmm. in every city, every university, and that should be something connected to Idara. You know, yes. we should connect we, our we, little we bit society. We haven't got any arrangements for our Shia community or our Muslim communities to actually connect with students yeah. at the university. Because it's actually, I think it's quite amazing how you know certain students or certain people have the you know strength in them to build a society of Ahlul Bayt society in their universities. In itself, that is a quite a big act quite a big step take on your own but if for instance the idara was able to you know give them Impact that push that. and it can help yeah. them how big would that society be how big would that islamic society so be and how much would that it our local idaras should work with the local universities yes, because the only will that influence the youth and not encourage them to be you know in, be proud of themselves of what they are but it will also in, in, it will also you know encourage the outer you know the non muslim community the Absolutely. people outside to let them know what we are who we are yeah. Because right now we are a minority and people do have the wrong idea of us. As the Ahlul Bayt societies, we have Christian societies and you know ISOX, and we should have ABSOC as well, just so we can you know imp let people know who we are. And the youths are leading that. At that the that really goes to uh, a, a text message that we had, yeah. um, and that is from a brother, brother Abbas. Uh, there are hardly any Muslim role models in the UK uh, that can show youngsters success is possible in any given field. There are not really any positive role models in the media. Most of the time, Islam is mentioned alongside war, death, lack of human rights, and terrorism. Mm. 
Now that really is a very interesting text message. It's, mm. I think it's so that um, goes really back to universities yeah, and, and how it's Islam also this attitude as well. And as well with avenues of um, empl uh, of careers. Now, uh, there is one thing that I've noticed, especially in our Asian communities, is that we're pushed to do certain subjects which are seen as you know a respectable career to be an engineer, to be a doctor, doctorate, you know, to get a PhD in this, that, that. There are certain things that were seen that you know you've got a good job. But if you're do, if you're going on down to do a route of geography, English literature, or something else, then it's sort of like, okay, what's the point? Maybe of doing you didn't that? get good grades. What, what, no, not even <coughs> that. What is the point? What's the point? You know, oh, that's that that attitude is what brings it, another thing. It brings people down. Uh, that's potential talent wasted because you're getting an artist to do mathematics and you're getting a mathematician to do arts. It's you mm -hmm. can't you can't you can't put place you know you can't place an engineer in a surge in, so in the right surgery. people are not in the right places. Yes, and that's because you know we all have a skill, a world talent that we need to elaborate on. And in you know in, as we go as we go I take our A levels, go take our university choices. It should be based on what we're good at. Uh, provide. Uh, and not only what we're good at, the skills we're good at, and what we enjoy doing, because that is going to affect us in the future. And that is another reason, I reckon, which has it, is the reason for unemployment as well. Because so half the time, the subjects that the people are taking are not something that they are <coughs> wanting to do. It's more because they're pushed to do it. How many uh, people in the Asian community are lawyers, doctors, or engineers? And not how many of us are geograph geographers or, you know, journalists or something you know artists or something else you know some different fields we should be encouraged to you know follow up a field that we yeah. do you know comfortably nicely that that will and the, as, again with the media as well obviously yes that 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 ever since you know maybe 9-11 etc that has been this this attitude of muslim muslims being you know violent etc but it's 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 a negative as not in the nowadays and age i think people recognize that it's a stereotype how can we, we repair that i think it's already i think we've gone past the stage where it needs repairing it's almost almost comical now for somebody to turn around to you and say you're a terrorist because now i think from the media and ourselves as we have been doing a good job by promoting ourselves as being peaceful people you know to to counteract that stereotype of being of being you know terrorists it's simple it's the same for the example for no, the but it, it sounds pretty uh, it, from as if it's a story from La La Land because when we study yeah. stats last week we studied stats and majority of Asians mm. who actually are unemployed purely because the top of the list is discrimination mm. yeah so they, they, they are discriminated yeah uh, and also uh, those who are actually graduated and they've actually managed to get themselves good grades and f you know uh, two ones and first of this society even they have a, uh, that's something we have to change they, they, the whole community. To, they haven't to apply twice we have to jobs. strengthen ourselves you know to get us because that's that's us challenging the world that's our uh, us as a people who are you challenging when you say the we're, world when we say we're challenging the world we're, we 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 are not we are a minority and there are people that are you know that don't i don't know how how we should say this there are enemies of islam there are people that don't you know don't want to see us stride there are people that are, will put us down that's the same with everyone our aim is to strengthen ourselves and to make ourselves you know a to uh, uh, re, uh, you know, be proud of ourselves. Let people know who we are. You know, get ourselves out where there. Do you, where do you get this integrate. idea that uh, they are they are enemies of Islam? <sighs> it's not an idea. It's a fact. It's not. It's always been a fact. I think, as a principle, generally, not just in Islam, we always have enemies. Wherever we go through our life, we will always have people that don't want us to achieve. You know, to achieve something because of whatever jealousy, hatred, etc. Right. Because. Oh, yeah. but no, this is this is very important. Our youth, uh, a they 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 pretty uh, depressed when it comes to our community, what our community is doing, and then on the same front, apparently they've got a challenge, inbuilt challenge in their mind. I don't know if that's practical or if even if it's available or if it's concrete, but they feel that there is a challenge for them to prove to the world who mm -hmm. they deem that they may be anti-Islam powers, which. In my view, is non-existent, but our youth feels that way. Mm, mm. How, how do you address that? I, I, I don't think there are a, 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 a Islamic ideology conflicts with uh, Western secularism, and therefore, if yeah, which if, again is a minority. If, which uh, well, Islamic, uh, we're we're a minority group in yeah. a secular country. 
However, uh, you, these are challenges that we, 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 we seem to be at war with secular world materialism, with Islam. So that is where perhaps mm. you're referring to as the enemies of Islam. Yeah. There is no enemy, there's no uh, there's no war. specific there's, there's no specifics here. It's just it, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's this uh, war against Islamic values and how because we, we we're thinking about the hereafter and the spirituality, whereas we're challenged. The, we are the Western is world is more about secularism and materialistic world where you know you you, you want it here and now. And, and that's, I, I believe, that is the, uh, yeah, the, I mean, the enemy of the It's like going to university and being able to, you know, say, this is what I believe in. For us, I personally think it's more difficult, it's more, we have more responsibility on, our, on a woman, rather than our men, our women, who have to wear a scarf. And when somebody turns around and you say, why have you got a piece of cloth around your head? To be able to answer that without stuttering, without getting stuck with looking. And then, yeah, yeah, with confidence, I think this is why I wear hijab. This is the reason, and I do it out of personal choice, not because I've been told to, as most people perceive. Because apparently, woman uh, is another perception but that why, women why, why, uh, What I'm trying to understand is why that defensive approach. Why be defensive? It's not being defensive. It's, it's when somebody when somebody questions you, you should be able to reply, respond confidently. You should be able to question, and you should be able to reply as but well. Why worry about it? Why worry about why? it? Why? Because if you because don't you should know, know what you're doing and what you believe you in. You know, if you don't know who you are, then somebody will tell you who you are. We are taught And they to will question. give you a distorted view about your yeah. religion. So it's best that you know who you are and you can mm. explain yourself. But does that lead you to think? And hold your in dignity. And but I, does that lead you to think that our youth today thinks that uh, the outside world is our enemy? Not at all. No, not. it's not the enemy. It's just that you need to. If, if you don't know who you are and if you don't know your background and you can't educate others, so it's not, it's not the enemy. There, there are a lot of different forms of enemy, for example, the one that you've just referred to or uh, about f the way we practice our, our way of life. Islam is a whole way of life for us. So that might have conflict with um, the practices of a, per a, a, a corporate organization. Mm. Right. So, we, you know, for example, we need prayer rooms. And if you need a prayer room, and that's why that could be. No, but it's, as it, it is. It is now in the employer code of conduct. Yes. You know, if, it, if demanded, then you have to supply it. If of course. not, then you have to relieve them but for time for as long as it takes yes. for them to but travel to. But it's still a challenge, and it's also with Islamic employers. names. No. Uh, you know, Let's people have had to change the their names to apply for jobs. If you hire a female with her scarf, you got to about this image when yeah. she goes to represent the business in meeting or Yeah, you wouldn't have a, you know, a lady wearing mm. scarf at your reception. You'd rather have a nice, good-looking blonde yeah. who's representing yeah. uh, the yeah, organisation. Definitely. It, and that really is understandable. But when it comes to youth at universities, which is where we're referring mm. to, mm. Uh, our youth at universities, our idaras hold a responsibility and there is a disconnect from our idaras to add value to our university students, for example. Uh, our brother gave a very good example that our university students, uh, they uh, uh, on gave an example of a About particular organisation. Our little bit society, we have our uh, ABSOCs in different universities. I think most of the universities do have um, a, some sort of a little bit society where they all hold lectures, functions, events, dinners, stalls, that sort of thing. You know, during Muharram time, Ashura time, um, in, uh, in America they do. In, Amer uh, in, in America, in Ashura day, handling out water bottles with, you know, information about Ashura and Muharram mm -hmm. on Ashura day, on the 10th month in the university as a student union, handing it out, yeah. giving people information, yeah. giving them food, dabaruk, etc. It's a, it's a way of promoting yourself, uh, you know, getting people to know who you are. And you know, not it's a social act as well. It's socialising because when where you're at university to counteract, you know, the fact of going out, clubbing, drinking, smoking, socialising how everyone else does. You have to have alternatives, mm -hmm. and those alternatives aren't always going to be going to play football, going to do sports, and they have to be other things. So by building that Ahlul Bayt society, not only are you implementing your religion into your social life, but you're able to find alternative ways of you know spending your spare time you know you've got a close knit group of friends that are like yourself and you're not doing anything but you're enjoying yourself at the same time you're studying and you're you know promoting your religion you're doing what you should do you're doing your wajibat and you're actually do, you're getting so hard for increasing you know expressing yourself Marshall, that's yeah, very good I, yeah it's very good and i think we need that duplicated because back in the mid 90s when i was at university mm -hmm. we didn't have that we, we didn't. did have the mainstream muslim society yeah. but we didn't have the the Ahlul Bayt 
mm. and uh, this Shia community. And I remember, you know, I had to sort of join in with the Muslim community mm. and the, the mm. youngsters. And, and, I, I, and I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with you joining, you know, mm. the Muslim community, because obviously, after all, we're all Muslims and no, we I, talk however, about... However, but the, the thing is, I was going to add that we've got... To, I had my, uh, the, my final exams were on Ashura Day, and I, uh, they, I, I wanted to take day a day off to do, uh, take part in the Ashura. Uh, however, I couldn't, and I spoke to my uh, personal tutor, and he, he said, well, well if you, when you're teaching in school, then are you going to take a day off? And then I said, well, if, yes, if it's going to be part of my religious practice, then I would. But then he asked the other Muslim students, and no. they said, no, they, don't, no. they wouldn't take time off. No. See, this that's is why it's important. <coughs> that this is where these the societies come in, and they, they're speaking yes. on your behalf. Yeah. It's like a student's union. Sure. It is. It so is then, I, then I went in in the morning, and, uh, 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 and at, uh, at my exam was over at 12 o'clock, and I quickly drove to mm. uh, take part. It was, a, you know, it was later on, and then I just took part after the Amals and uh, took part in the Shura. Th that's really so, good. I mean, that, know, that, that, that shows straight away an example where and you know, a society exam. that refers to Shias mm -hmm. in the universities sure. could uh, really help. It's good because, uh, for instance, for example, the Birmingham, uh, we have the Ahlul Bayt Society over there. They have. In what Birmingham the, University? Yes, in Aston. Oh, I think Aston University hold the Ahlul Bayt Society for all the three universities because there's three universities in Birmingham, obviously. Are you a member of that? Um, no, I'm not a member of that one myself, but. That's, You're that's aware that, that Yeah, happens. I'm aware of that. So okay. Obviously, is that what they try to do is get you, students of the university recognise which, because obviously, if you're a Shia and you're travelling to Birmingham, for for instance, from Scotland, you are not aware of any Shia around. Mm. It is very healthy to find a place where you can, you know, say, safe, oh, safe, a safe, safe, a, safe, a, safe, safe. A, a safe. So all the Shia yeah, students find each good. other and then close knit, get to know each other. And not only that, then then they elect people to, you know, t give lectures in front of every student like you know all the students mm -hmm. representing their you know representing themselves giving us a, a lecture for instance about Muharram or about Eid or something you know re planning out a lecture I mean this saying, is yeah, this is really really getting our youth uh, to represent us this is this is absolutely commendable uh, Samreen these uh, students and mm. the you know members of youth they're doing a great deal of work mm. outside their idaras they're doing mm. in the universities and they're still doing because they, they understand the need for that mm. level of networking and they alhamdulillah this is the essence of the training that they've had from the parents mm. and that's the reason why they're still doing what they need mm. to do in outside world mm. how do you think our idaras can impact these by organizations promoting them, yeah. by promoting them i think i mentioned before that you know having a fresh fair at the masjid is our introduction to the new people that are going to come to our city fresh fair okay you know, well, can you dwell on people that people that are coming from our, uh, my daughter goes to university i would want to know that she's going to be safe and it, with people that know her or she would n have some people that she can go yeah, to. Yeah, we know she has yeah. in Manchester, yeah. in Bradford. But we if can, somebody's can, coming you know, from, you know... Make a phone uh, call and say, my daughter's um, here. You know, yeah. why, why should we restrict them? Like, I mean, the, the stereotypical attitude is just try and keep your girls That's in the right, same yeah. city university. Yeah. But if they're going to advance their education, right. which is the whole purpose uh, of our religion, that we advance our ed education and, and develop ourselves, we need to be able to p pan out. And we Absolutely. Need to so uh, what you're but saying is that... But when we're branching out, we need, uh, we need to know that they're safe. So our well. idaras could play the role of exactly, yeah. supplementary yeah. parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whereby our brothers and yes. sisters or our daughters and yeah. sons, yeah. they go to different cities, yeah. then you can call uh, the committee for yeah. that idara and say, right, my daughter and son is exactly. now in the local university. Yeah. They are members of Ahlul Bayt yeah. Society in that particular mm -hmm. vicinity. Yeah. And even offer them accommodation facilities. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. If, the, if available. They, they sometimes accommodation isn't available. Yeah. In, in, People are renting in, in out university. all the time within our community. Wouldn't Why not nice? rent out to yeah, our to own our students? Own yes. But do you think most of our daughters are able to uh, house students? Not necessarily I everyone expected it, to it house. It wouldn't be housing the students. We're, we're talking about, for example, if I've got a spare room and I could uh, rent it out to a Muslim girl yeah. coming. A, a if Shia I was Muslim going to rent it out to anybody Scotland. anyway, there and are people that example, rent out anyway. Yes. You know, right, have, so what you're saying is that if a Shia Muslim who is in property yeah. development yeah. Uh, arena yeah. and they've or got they five houses in Birmingham, they could actually yeah. advertise those houses yeah. to the local mosque. Yeah. And local mosque, yeah. if local mosque is mm -hmm. associated or engaging mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. soci uh, student societies mm -hmm. and universities, mm -hmm. then they could say, right, okay, boys or girls, we've got five houses. Mm -hmm. 
uh, two of those houses are for girls mm. and three of those houses are for boys yeah. and please come join yeah. us and yeah. Yeah. that's you a see, remarkable idea yeah, because quite often they end up sharing with uh, non-muslim girls and they've got their, their own challenges very different yeah I exactly uh, would you give us some Can insight I? of what sort of challenges would you have just briefly we've got uh, literally limited time and i want to make a point as well yeah please. once yeah. once we've heard this and then we'll come back to you on that so what sort of challenges uh, would a muslim student have when they cohabiting or sharing a house share with somebody who's okay not when you when you start university you first start getting into university you've gone to most like obviously university halls assuming that you're going to a city that is not your own or far away city yep. your first few weeks is going to be a bit you know like um, you're getting to know people that first those first few weeks are essential because the first people you get to know get to be comfortable with that group of close group of friends you make are going to affect the rest of your years at university because you will stick with them because a natural human instinct is whoever you're comfortable with is stick with them no, but what my is, question is that after, who yes, you live with, li so that, that does affect because when you get to know these people, those are the people that you will essentially be house sharing with. Your friends are the people that you're going to house share with because at the start... No, but you would have chosen your house before you moved to the university. Yeah, the, um, at the start, obviously assuming that if, 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 you, if you're going to... Uh, student you know student halls obviously that's you know first your your is, first year is student yeah, halls that halls. is when you get to know people because if you're going to a different city it's very unlikely that you're going to look for a house to rent because it's very difficult to find that's if right you're set with random set of people it's the same principle you're going to have to get to know the people around you um house sharing isn't a problem it's not something that it is a challenge no, but you've got but communal you're, kitchen you've got you're better off, you're better off sharing with people that you you know like yourself as i said with the suggestion of having you know houses being rented out for our, our people for Shia people for Muslim people even just Muslim people mm -hmm. so that they're able to you know stay you know because the, obviously there's a problem the jasat and you know yeah. halal and haram food and you know sh sometimes you can so be So these are the challenges I mean, you were saying something about yeah, no, I was, I was going to say to you that you asked about how the, uh, we can ask the idaras and the communities. And <coughs> we as members need to also mm. ask the idara community where is the, uh, the, our membership being spent and how is it being spent and is part of it being spent on part uh, for uh, well, they, education. They, they, invited a Maulana, like they invited an expensive Maulana from India <laughs> or Pakistan. And they yeah. also invited. Did we, agree to, did we agree to that? That's and they also yeah, had is, uh, yeah. ten, ten uh, dastarkhan full of, mashallah, yeah. five dishes. Th this is what I'm saying. So it should be that That's a, a proportion of it should be spent on education. Proportion of it should be yeah. spent on. So what you're uh, saying is just taxes uh, are spent. Uh, you know, yes, education, exactly. yeah. so medical, etc. When we should have a say in how our money is being spent. So what you're saying I is that there needs to be budgeting. There needs to be uh, indeed. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, and also, I mean, some of the money goes abroad to support. Uh, fine. Uh, I'm all for that for Syria and also the uh, uh, other developing countries but it also needs to be spent at home you know the English community says charity begins at home mm. yeah we and build our we own communities up and then offer helping hands to out communities first yeah. we have to build ourselves up to be able to ha offer our hands to other people it's not just a case of oh because we are Shia we are Muslim we only going to help each other it? If, if your idara is spending more money uh, abroad than they're not spending on you? No, it's not, it's not about what, obviously it's necessary, it's a necessary thing to spend money, you know, helping people outside abroad, uh, for instance in Syria, they need, they, it's our, at the end of the day we're giving charity, we're doing our bit to help them as best we can because we can't go over there and help them, but we're doing our best, but it is, a, it is a very <coughs> key, I think it's almost a priority to put in funds to help ourselves first, so I, because there is no point in spending money abroad if our youngers when they grow up they're not going to they're not going to spend their, their money abroad if, if, if for instance um, something happens a disaster happens in maybe 20 years time we want our kids to have the heart in them to have that you know yes. sense of th maturity and you know understanding that they need to have a, help them as well to uh, be able to get that idea into head we need to you know but, but help we, them, we need to get our kids that far yeah we first. need to get our kids that well, we well, need how, to build we ourselves our first kids to getting them that far to be able to help yeah, yeah we need to build our, ourselves uh, first i want to i want to hear from you uh, are idaras at the moment in your view mm. uh, are idaras have a complete disconnect uh, and this is the majority of idaras a complete disconnect from our youth if it comes to uh, you know adding um, value to their educational needs their employment needs what do you think causes that disconnect because we really have understood within uh, this one hour almost one hour that uh, 
that there's a great deal of work that our idaras can do. Mm. Where is that disconnect coming uh, from? And what is stopping this? I think, um, where is it? Oh, ambition, vision, um, no, uh, neglect. So um, they, they just don't want to do it. And the lack of care, they don't it's care. If we get our point across, like, for instance, uh, just from this show itself, we've yeah. all got a point of Briefly. view from yeah. every single Briefly. person. Um, now that we've got our points across to these idaris, now it's their responsibility to, after seeing this to spread the word that now this is the problem, what should we do to solution? We've even provided you know, suggestions, not solutions, suggestions for solutions and that we should implement them. Now it's time for action. It's after, after saying what the solution problem is, you should act on it as well. Action is what we need, the next step we need to take. Hopefully, to inshallah. A few words from you in the end. Like I said to you, we're paying our donations. We create these organizations and idaras and we are we are answerable to but the the whole saying is that if you don't speak up you won't be heard and yeah. we can't keep complaining to ourselves so what you're saying we need to speak we up need to, to speak be up right. and say what, what we about need. yourself mm -hmm. i think last we, need week some, last <laughs> week we need fresh blood in the mainstream fresh blood in the mainstream fresh mm. blood in the idaras mm. and take action Inshallah. Well, thank you very much to all my honourable guests uh, and our uh, panellists, also our brother On Mohammed, who has actually joined and added a great deal of, uh, of value f and represented youth very well. Um, viewers, uh, Alhamdulillah, we discussed in, in, in these two days, Saturday and Sunday, a role of our idaras um, across our community. And there's a great deal of work that our idaras can do. Uh, and I'm sure, it, uh, and I hope, and I pray to God that this isn't the case, that the intention definitely is there, uh, but it's just that uh, they, the vision and it, there, is, there isn't uh, support available. So all the professionals who are in their local vicinities, please contact your local idaras, uh, speak to the committee and advise them on how you can help the youth, because youth is now uh, literally on the verge of t converting into a generation four and when third generation I is lost out then clearly uh, believe you me it would be too late uh, and I hope we look after our youth today because they will be building our future for tomorrow thank you very much for watching us today keep sending your uh, sending us your emails email address is voy at hidayat.tv if you wish to add any comments questions or ask anything from our senior panelists here on the, here on the show uh, you're more than welcome to write to us. Until next week, uh, we sign off. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.